What's cracking people? I'm Theo Kane and in today's video I'm going to be taking a look at something and creating something based off something that no doubt 99% of the people that are watching this video today have some kind of attachment to. So I was recently approached by a company whose name is synonymous with 90s pop culture and when they asked me to do a collaboration with them I couldn't have said yes quick enough. So in this episode I'm going to be combining my love of the 90s and nostalgia with my toy making skills, mashing them together and throwing them out in a way that you can only find here at Slime House TV. So if that sounds like a bit of you, make sure you're comfy and let me take you all the way back to a couple of weeks ago when I first started working on this project. Let's do this. So what I've got here are two of the 2024 re-release Pog Hobby Boxes. Pogs in 2024, it sounds like I'm talking Grease, but these are 100% genuine and 100% authentic. Now I've not looked inside these yet or anything like that, I'm checking these out for the first time now with you on camera, but it does say here that we get eight authentic Pog milk caps per pack. So I take it inside here, it's a lot of like separate packets or something like that, but I don't know for sure. They've also sent me this as well, which is very fire. This is an official Pog tournament mat. So when you play Pogs, you have one of these mats like this and you put that down, you stack your Pogs up and then you play the game on it. So this is an official tournament game board. So I'm not going to do like a whole big unboxing right now or anything like that because there's some other stuff that I want to get to in this video and we're going to do that later. But I did want to have a quick look inside these before I talk about that because basically what's inside these boxes is going to directly influence the thing that we create in today's episode. So, what we got in here first of all? Okay. The first thing I'm seeing is a one WPF Metal Kinney Slammer. Now it does say on the side of this box here that you can get a silver or a gold slammer. Looks like I got the silver one, which is awesome. Looking inside the box as well, as I said, would probably be the case. We've got a bunch of separate packs of pogs, which I'm gonna get into later. And what's also awesome is that it looks like this actually turns into, yes it does, a POS stand, like a point of sale stand. So back in the day, you would go into your local news agents or the store or the 7-Eleven if you're in America or whatever, and they would have these on the desk when you go to the cash register and you would pester your mom or your dad and they would buy you a pack or two. So that's really awesome. I love that it comes in its own point of sale stand. And if we have a look inside this one. Oh, jackpot, check this. Congratulations, you have received a 22 karat gold leaf kinney slammer. That's incredible, check that. You know I'll wear that on a chain as well, I'll do that. <laughs> the completionist and the collector in me is very happy right now, so I got one of each, that's awesome. And this again is full of packs of pogs, which I'm gonna get into in this video, we're gonna have a look at these. But what I really wanted to do is tell you like the main thing that I wanna get out of this whole project that I'm doing with pogs at the minute. So when they hit me up, it was super awesome. I was very excited to get hit up by pogs like officially because they want you to work on a project with them is very, very cool. And the fact that they wanted to send me some of these new boxes, I was like, absolutely sign me up, I'm down. I'm an 80s kid, I'm a 90s kid. I grew up in those eras. Pogs are like a huge part of me growing up and a huge part of my childhood. I even made a pog documentary on this channel years ago, a pogumentary if you will. And I figured that they'd just seen that on YouTube and that's why they they hit me up but then they also told me that they're a big fan of my toy making episodes and my creative videos as well and I said well that's awesome that you want to send me some pogs and I'll open them in this video and that's what I'm going to do but then also maybe we can do something with the fact that you've got the pog license and I'm a toy maker and to my knowledge there's never been a pogman action figure made there's been key rings there's been bendies there's been plush toys and that kind of thing but there's never been a pogman action figure like maybe we can do something with that and do something with that we did so yeah, you can probably guess where I'm going with this. You see, to me, Pogs coming back is a really cool thing and a big deal, and I wanted to make this collaboration with them way more than me just unboxing their new hobby sets. As fun as that is, obviously. But try and do something that I feel really celebrated this new release properly, and also do it Slimehouse style. So with Pog's blessing, I got to work sculpting what would be the first ever action figure of the Pog's official mascot character. A crazy little smiley furry dude that if you was into Pog's in the 90s, you'll no doubt recognise the Pogman. 
So when Pogs came out in the early 90s, it's safe to say that they kind of took the world by storm, and whether you just collected and traded them, found them as free gifts in your snacks or cereal boxes, or you actually played the game that they were made for, most people remember getting involved with Pogs in some form or another. And if you did, you'll probably remember seeing the Pogman because drawings of him in various outfits and scenarios were featured on most of them. And because I'd been sent a bunch of packs by Pog, I had a ton of references to work from when it came to sculpting my Pogman action figure. Now, this is a character that was originally designed by Mitch Shower, who created and worked on some legendary 90s characters. He's got a very distinct style, and he must have literally drawn hundreds of different versions of this guy. And honestly, no two look the same. Sometimes he looks long and gangly, other times he looks a bit more tucked in like a little furball, so this definitely gave me a bit of a challenge when I was trying to find a way of creating him in 3D from a bunch of 2D drawings and still have him looking like the Pogman that everyone remembers. It's also important to note as well that these new Pogs have all been redrawn by an artist called Brent Scotchmeyer and reprinted in real high quality, so there's going to be a lot in here that you might recognise from when you were growing up, just printed a bit more crisp and clear than they would have been back in the 90s, which I think is a real nice way of honouring what came before them, but still making these feel a bit more fresh and new. So by this point in the sculpting phase, I'd got the body and the mouth shape pretty much where I wanted it, I'd started adding most of the fine details like the grooves in the teeth and the creases in the fur, and it was time to get the hands and the feet started. So Pogman has these real long feet with four toes, which were definitely going to help balance out the weight at the top half of his body, so that was really good, because this toy definitely has the potential to be top heavy. His hands were also pretty fun to do as well, again with limited digits, three fingers and one thumb. And once I got them all sorted and everything attached and everything was proportioned the way that I wanted it, I quickly gave him some simple articulation and was left with a finished Pogman figure that I was very happy with. From there, I sent the sculpt over to my laptop so that I could open it up in the 3D printing software that I use and get it all supported and ready to be sent to the Elegoo, which is the machine that I print all of my toys on, so once again shouts to them. Also again thanks to them for sending me out some new resin to try, this one's a little bit flexible as well, it's an ABS resin, and with Pogman having such spindly arms and legs that could easily get broken if it was a rigid resin, this more flexible one couldn't have come at a better time. Now although it was all finished and being printed, there was still one thing about this figure that were pecking my head a little bit, something that I wasn't sure how I were going to pull it off, and that was his whiskers. I did try sculpting him without them, but it just didn't look right, so this was something that I were definitely going to have to think about, because even with the ABS resin, they were still way too thin to be printed out. So Pogman has had all these separate parts printed, they've all been in the curing machine, in the Mercury Cura, they've all been cured, and it's now time for my least favourite part of the build, as you know if you watch this show, uh, the sanding stage, but to be honest, it's not too bad, because other than his body, all the little pieces, his limbs, his hair piece, his pog in his hand and all that kind of thing, are all pretty lightweight, so they didn't need too many sprues on them, they didn't need too many supports, so there's not too many support marks. Now the only thing to work out after I do this, and I talked a bit about this earlier if you remember, is I've got to work out how to do his whiskers. I did sculpt them in the program, but they were way too thin to print, so I need to think of something to put in there, and I now think I've got a solution for it. So I'm going to get this finished, get this guy sanded, and then I'll let you know about my little idea that I've got. So what I've got here is a dustpan and brush, a bulldozer. Everybody always comments when they see this, when they come round. It's like a, a workshop, a workshop dustpan and brush. And what's good about this is it's got like really dense, hard-wearing bristles, really thick ones. And uh, I thought, do you know what? Maybe I could cut them and use them as the whiskers. And after I started cutting some off it, I also noticed that they came in different thickness strands as well, which was perfect. So I cut a couple off, I trimmed them down to the right size and I've put them in the holes and they actually kind of work almost perfect. So that's what I'm going to go with. I think that'll work. I think if you were to buy a toy back then and it had some kind of moustache or whisker or like a cat toy with whiskers or something, it would be like little plastic, like long, thin bristles. And because these are synthetic and not real hair, uh, the they kind of work. So I had to give them a wash because obviously this is a grubby, horrible thing that I've been using to, uh, to wipe the floor with. But yeah, it's looking really good. 
So I'm going to give these one last little sand, give them one last little hit with the curing torch in any little hole so that there's no like resin just hiding in there or anything like that that's going to seek out after when I'm painting it and go and get them primed while it's still nice and uh, nice and bright outside and not raining. You might also notice as well that usually I work on the table. I'm working over here today, which I never normally do. I've got like a central podium table specifically for this kind of thing. But at the minute, it's actually got something on it that's for the next video that I can't show yet. So that's like a top secret thing. I'm basically shooting two videos at once right now, but that will be hopefully the next video that I drop covering whatever's on this table. So make sure you subscribe to the channel if you're interested in what that is, because it's going to be the next video, hopefully, if everything goes to plan. I've also put some like exclusive behind the scenes stuff of that and everything else that I'm working on at the minute over on the Slime Alliance Discord. So if you want access to that, you can go and join the Patreon under the Slime Alliance tier. I'll put all these links down below so you can see them. Back to the Pogman for a second as well. I chose to give him very simple articulation this time, just push fit pegs. So he's got two arms that push in, he's got two separate legs that push in, and then I also did his little hair piece, his little like quiff that goes on the top of his head, a separate thing as well. So that just screws in like that and that sits in nicely. And then of course, we've got the little Pog that fits in his hand as well, which I, uh, I really like and it fits in very satisfyingly, especially with this new resin that I got sent by Elago. Really, really nice. So yeah, like I said, without further ado, I'm gonna get this guy outside, I'm gonna get him painted and uh, we'll, uh, we'll meet back up at the spray a little bit later. So for the primer, I intended to use my usual can of matte grey. Now this actually ran out straight away and I didn't have any backup cans. Luckily though, I did find a flesh coloured Tamiya spray paint, which means that I could get at least all of the peachy skin tone parts of the toy sorted in one hit, which I was very happy about because this would definitely save me a lot of time later on. So with all those parts sorted, it was back to the studio to get the rest of his body colour sorted over at the spray booth. Now for his body, I went for a white star first of all, which is a paint by two thin coats, and after mixing it with a bit of thinner and getting a nice consistency, I started covering the whole area as smoothly as possible, because once this was dry, I would be going over the top of that with an orange, so starting with this real bright white would hopefully give me the perfect base for covering over with an orange Pogman fur colour after. So for the fur, I went again with a two thin coats colour, this time called Fanatic Orange, making sure that I got nice thin down coverage over the whole thing with my brush. Also being careful I didn't put anything down too quick or too watery and just taking my time with it and staying patient. And after a couple of layers, I was left with a beautiful orange colour that I felt really popped and was also perfectly fitting for a 90s Pogman. From there, I started painting the gums and any area around his teeth on the outside of his mouth with Proacryl Magenta. After this, I started working on his nose and for this, I used a purple Proacryl. And this is always a stage that I really enjoy when I'm working on these figures, when you really start seeing them come alive. Now the next bit I knew were going to be a little bit tricky because the way that I sculpted his teeth meant that in order to paint the inside of his mouth and his tongue I would have to go in at a real dodgy angle and I knew in advance that this was probably going to be an issue and I did even consider trying to make the teeth separate pieces that slotted in afterwards but I'll be honest I just needed to get this thing finished because the deadline for the video was approaching and ideally I would like to spend a good few days working out all the articulation and all the engineering side of my figures like printing several different ones in different sizes and just trying to snap everything together perfectly but sometimes Sometimes it's just not possible and with this being a one-off prototype I decided to just get it all printed off in one and worry about painting the weird angle later. Now for this inner mouth colour I mixed together a couple of different brands using a Proacryl pink and a two thin coats Hellspawn red because I just couldn't find the right pink that I needed and although it was a bit annoying going in at this weird angle I managed to sort it and after some cutting in, some cutting back and a final touch up of all the little details I was left with a figure that was looking very professional and all ready to get lacquered and then go in front of the camera for his final reveal shots. So there you have 
have it, my Pogs X Slime House collaboration action figure of Pogman. And I've got to say, I'm really happy with how this guy came out. When you're working on a character that's so iconic, there's a lot of pressure there. Also with this being an official collaboration and that kind of thing. And having so many different references that are all drawn in so many different ways, like it was a real challenge, but I feel like it came out even better than I thought it would. I'm also really happy with the whiskers. I know I keep talking about them, but like when I create a toy on this channel, I don't want it to feel scratch built or DIY or anything like that. I want it to feel like it's a factory produced figure that came right out of a blister pack. And by using those little plastic things for the whiskers, those bristles off the brush, I really feel that that's the kind of thing that a factory would have used to create that with a toy like this. And again, just like makes it feel authentic, which is what I'm always trying to go for when I create these toys. When I think of IPs from this era, I think of characters like Beavis and Butthead and Ren and Stimpy. Characters that were like kind of gross and a bit gnarly and that kind of thing. And I feel like if this was a toy that was released around that time, hopefully this is one that would like just slot in right next to them. And I know around that time in the 90s, there was a bendy hard rubber Pogman figure made because I talked about it at the start of this video, but not an action figure. So I like to feel like this Pogman figure that I've made here today is like the Pogman 90s action figure that never existed before and probably should have. In terms of articulation that makes him an action figure, it's only his arms that move. I could do a little bit more if I had more time to work on the articulation. Obviously his head and his body are like one piece so I couldn't put any swivel in there or anything like that. But his arms do move so I'm happy with that. In terms of how he scales up with the other figures that I make, he kind of stands in between the Torjam and Earl figure and the Zul figure. So if he was a real character in real life within that world, he'd probably stand about four feet, four and a half feet. What do you reckon? As you can see in his hand as well, I gave him a slammer, but not just any slammer, a gold slammer, obviously as a homage to the gold slammer that came in these boxes here today. And I just hope that you lot watching this feel like I did the character justice and like he's a worthy celebration of these awesome new boxes coming out. And not only that, just like a nod to all the cool memories that we will have had attached to Pogs growing up. Now, although I've not said it throughout this video, this Pogman figure is not something that's going to be available for sale anytime soon or anything like that. Obviously, if Pogs want to do it, then I'm down. Like, if they're down, then I am. But this is just a figure that I made as a one-off to celebrate these new hobby boxes being released. But luckily, if you have got some nostalgia for Pogs after watching this video and you want to get involved and you want to add some Pogs to your collection, then these sets are actually available to pre-order right now. I'll put the link down in the description to them. That's also my affiliate link, so if you go through that, I get a little kickback, which is always appreciated, but it's never necessary. I'm just happy to have the opportunity to do this with Pogs. It's been like a dream come true for me. And just the fact that I got all these Pogs sent me and some like uh, exclusive slammers and a gold slammer and stuff like I'm more than happy. But in the meantime, I just want to say a massive thank you to everybody that took the time to watch this video today. I'd love to know what you think of my Pogman figure. Do you think I did it justice? Do you think I could have done it better? Let me know down in the comments below. I'd also love to know if you've got any cool stories or memories attached to Pogs that you'd like to share because I'd love to read them. Again, let me know down in the comments. I want to say another massive thank you to Pogs for getting in touch with me and sending me these hobby boxes, doing a collaboration with me and also like giving me their nod and their blessing to recreate their Pogman figure. So again, I hope you think I did it justice. And I also obviously want to say a massive thank you to you lot for checking out this video today. With all of the other stuff that you can be watching on YouTube, it really does mean a lot that you come back here every single week and check out some Slime House TV. I really do appreciate it and I hope to catch you in the next one. So until then, I'm Theo Kane, this is Slime House TV, this is the Pogman and I'll catch you in the next video. But until then, I'm gone. Pow!